Can I have a not? So big shot to start. And he caught, actually caught it thick. Now yesterday, early, Wu played Lechner right in front of us. It was very nervy Wu to start. Now once he got through that match, he played exceptional in the quarterfinal. So he can feed off off the good in his last match. And, and you know, the thing I saw like last night with Albin, and it was you and I that saw a very unique push out in the first game. Um, it's almost like him being such a, a favorite kind of got into his head early, and I don't think that's going to happen with Wu. Looks like he's attacking. I, was, yeah, I thought he made it. And I, and I wouldn't doubt these two have played somewhere along the line in some type of tournament in Asia, maybe the Middle East, or even in Europe. The one is in. Shape is achieved on the two, and here we go. Mohamed Sufi to break, leading one right to nil. You can just see it in his face. He's enjoying every second. Kind of curious how the, all four of these players slept last night, especially these two. Watch out, cue ball. Foul stroke, ball in hand. Can you set the match clock to show it's 1 0 Mohammed, please? The match score. Now you'll see at the bottom of the screen next to their name, Wu, 53rd seed here. Is that what it said? You would think with a 30 second shot clock in operation, Jeremy, you wouldn't see a big difference in pace, but there is between these two. It's apparent already. Wu is much more circumspect. Sufi is like lightning. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to go into the nine because going around it, really nothing offers position. So a little clip. I don't know if he's going heavy. Oh, he could go by it. He overcut it. And I thought that was an awkward shot to go by the nine coming above the seven. And this is a little bit of what I saw early against Lechner yesterday. He did settle in a bit more towards the end. Twenty nine years of age. Sufi. He's been living in Dortmund, Germany for six years. Best ever performance in a matchroom promoted major event. Last 32 of the European Open last year. So this is a bolt from the blue. shot here and the type of shot the players especially when nerves are high they like to elevate the cue versus Extension just kind of roll the ball in. Extension call please. Now he's got to play position so can he avoid the nine coming one rail. He's trying to stun around the nine. This is this could catch a little piece of it and make the three very awkward. Oh, he went with a high ball and he hit it pure, almost too pure feel. And if you'll notice, he caught the two a little thick to the pocket. Really worried about catching the nine coming back for position and. Consequently, got snookered. Uh, if he has to come underneath the eight here off of one rail, I would look at the two rail escape, but he's going to have to hit it with speed to bend the cue ball back towards the three. Watch for the scratch in the side or the corner.
So in both of the last two racks, he's had his chance. Wu, he overcut the six in rack two. This time, hooks himself on the three. And the table is wide open. The ball's screaming Potney. He beat the, the Mexican player, Esmel Paez, the jumping bean. Saw him get some action on the nine, now the cue ball. So another ball in Boy, hand for Wu to get started. This is super important in this semifinal. Start the clock, please. And I believe last night that Sufi, if I remember correctly, Trilled eight to five in that match. Won 11 8, so that's six on the spin to finish, and three here, so nine racks in a row on the main stage. Uh oh, yeah. And he played the four, I thought, you know, where the four was, and don't get me wrong, he's supposed to make that ball, but he could have rolled forward off the four to short side on the five. Much easier shot with the six pretty playable. When you interview players, they always say, it's all about me, how I play. But it isn't. It's about how the other guy plays. And if they play badly, more than likely you win. And so far, this has been a bad performance from Wu. Yeah, especially with two ball in hands. I mean, the percentage of the players, you know, especially with them open, getting out with ball in hand. But, you know, I think, uh oh, ooh, okay. So little things we see so far are going Sufi's way and not really fortune necessarily, just uh, Wu not capitalizing. How about this? He's not playing flawlessly. But the score is flawless. He couldn't be doing any better in that regard. He leads Wu Kunlin, who's made a very slow start, 4-0. So well, that does a job, that break. Yeah, with the open hand bridge, we don't see that very often, but he's broke the balls very well. I think with a high ball, he can get by the seven, back down for the four. He's got to hit this really well, and he's, I think he needs a little bit of right English, which makes it even more difficult. Our colleague Michael McMullen was very observant earlier in the week. His cue action with that flying right arm, very, very similar. And snooker fans back in the UK watching this will recall former World Snooker Championship semi-finalist Joe Swale. So similar in that regard. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, Swale was an inspired player as well. When he was on form, there was no stopping him. Yeah, and that's usually a sign of starting young, and you could see in the interview playing 20 years, so at nine years old starting, and really incredible shot there. He had to overcut it to the pocket with a bit of inside English to come back down to gain shape on the pink four, and just like we saw last night with a few mistakes from Alvin, the confidence grew even more from this young man from Syria. Very fast, similar build, Luke a little Rack thicker, six. but a fun guy to watch, to and he can beat you quick. Well, he won that ESPN quick pool shootout. Yeah, well, he threatened uh, some very, very prominent pro tournaments back in the day. He beat me one time at the U.S. Open in 19 minutes, a race to 11. Get you some of that. Yeah, 19 minutes. He had a few combinations in there, but and I actually won two games. All kinds of stories. He gets action on the nine. We talked about it. And there you go, Phil. Well, from the time the tip of the cue hit the wide ball, I think that rack lasted about 1.7 seconds. That's right. Maybe less than that. This is fairy tale stuff. Look at the golden break here. Well, the done. cue ball yeah. chipping it in. Yeah, that's the most common one coming across. That's why we get some brutal scratches off that nine, but it's a it's a win or lose kind of situation. Championship. Abdul right. Al Yusuf last year and Omar Al Shaheen in 2021 as the crowd 
We're baying for another golden break, Jeremy. Yeah, and I'll tell you, a big shot here at 6-0 just because if he makes this two and gains the shape across the table, 7 nothing is what it may be and maybe too much to overcome. We've seen it <clears throat> done this week a few times. Similar to the one he opened with, a little thick. Now Wu doesn't have a pocket for the two ball. It doesn't appear anyways. So things still kind of going well for Muhammad. This is awkward just because he's on the rail. He really can't manipulate the cue Extension ball too cool. much. And maybe he has a portion of the corner. No, he's going to go for the combo. The key to this shot, feel, is the pocket becomes a little bigger when you don't let up on it. The eight may slide in a bit. So don't roll it too much. Very difficult pot. He's trying to go behind the nine, so it's all speed control, and he's got to love that. Very nice effort. So we'll see if Sufi wants to hit it, this kick shot with a lot of speed or if he plays it uh, very light, which is the savvy play. One rail, he can go two rail and two rails and kind of clip it. He's going one rail. Uh, pretty good effort, but I think he did leave it on safety or the six down the rail. Now, Wu, who's had a few concerns making the ball, he may elect to play the simple safety behind the eight. playing the safety with that low tip position there. I think anyways. <laughs> Two to three rail escape here, Phil. Just thinking it's the the matchup, isn't it? The orthodox against the unconventional. The seasoned player against the shooting star. Yeah, you shouldn't go to the top rail here. You should go two cushions off the right side rail. Trying to come across the six. That way the six kind of, the cue ball kind of bleeds towards. Oh, he's missed it. Ball stroke. Ball in hand. Seven's pretty snug going by the eight. Nothing easy there, Start especially if you're nervous. A referee, Brendan Moore. Gets the cue ball out of the pocket, presents it to Wu, who's into double his total. Yeah, and a touchy shot. Positioning the cue ball there tells me most likely he's trying to get some short side position between the seven, eight, or maybe a little bit underneath the seven. That's got to go. That may marry the seven with ball in hand. Oh, he's all right. Okay, needs a little better hit on the one. All right, better hit on the one, still short and a golden break. You know, it's really strange in snooker when someone's lucky, they say he's been golden. It works perfectly here, golden, to knock the nine ball in. So it's the equaliser in that regard, and just like that, 
Wu's deficit has been reduced to three. Yeah, and he's feeling better about things every second. Sufi probably with a nice smile after that one as well. Even though he didn't love it, but it seems like he's loving every moment, moment, no matter the outcome. Fans around rooting on their countrymen. That's got to go a little. Uh, pretty good. Oh, wow, nice shot. And pretty good percentage knowing the 6-7 is helping. And if he gets behind the pink, it's a bonus. So yeah. Sufi lost his first match to Matthias Snigotsky at that point. He was unheralded, not even thought about. Not now. He's at the forefront of everyone's thoughts. Yeah, looks like he's hitting a high ball here, trying to hit it full, knock it around table, maybe go forward with the cue ball like that. Oh, he knocked it in. We've been looking for a quintessential tide turner. Is that it? Yeah, it could be. Oh, he's not going to like this at all. And it's been a few of those shots where he's really kind of let up a little bit. Yeah, you're right, Jeremy. He's been guilty of some very bad misjudgments actually not minor ones yeah because he had a lot of room for error there oh wow nice little check side spin from some distance so he's still staying confident even though he hasn't knocked a ball in in some time it is hard to get any much in or about the rack with this guy at the table I'll tell you plays so fast but he thinks very well at that pace is also. His approach is almost revolutionary. Couldn't agree more, Phil. Sufi wins the rack. One minute and 30 seconds, that rack. Pedestrian by Mohamed Sufi's standards. The four-rack lead of the Syrian is re-established. 9-5, two away. Start of the match, Jeremy, the greatest time amount oh, of time on a shot is one. when he breaks, but that one malfunctioned. Yeah, and that one was a little more on him, but still, that's that's what you have to do when you're playing the cut break. A little more gamble with the cue ball. Start a clock, please. He made two balls, though, so we were in a good position to cut that lead. think the eight's in the way at all. Extension, please. Surprising. Is he worried about drawing towards the two, maybe scratching in that corner by the two? I, I'm not sure here. Oh, he hit it great. And that's the scratch I was thinking oh, about. I, I think that's what made him so unsettled, Phil. Good call, Jeremy. Start Bad outcome up. for a man who's become the darling of the crowd here. Yeah, the gut instinct, that's what proves it's a sport to me. The gut instinct that these players possess is pretty incredible. Oh, he miscued. And I was just going to comment, you know, a lot of the Chinese Taipei players, they go with a very, very low tip, and then they come up for the draw stroke a bit. 
And when you're you could be off, it's actually that was more off the side of the ball more than an underneath scratch. That's why the cue ball went a little bit left. Oh, what a moment. Ooh, position could have been a little better here. With the eight being there, he's got to commit. He's OK. Told you squeezed it home. He'll shoot the nine ball like that as well. He's knocked in many of them. Spread the cue ball for the seven in the side. He's going to have to take a little longer shot on the eight, but nothing major. Just a stop shot here on the eight, most likely. I don't think any reason to draw the cue ball. You just saw your opponent miss cue. You got a nice shot in the nine in the upper corner, and he's a straight shooter. Came back anyways. Surprising. Hello. Mohammed Hello. Sufi on the hill. Nice hit. It's gonna leave some distance. Overall, he's gotta be pretty satisfied. Easy safety a couple different ways here. Just banking the two, going one rail behind the six. You could do that. Kind of bring the two between the three and nine. Just go the right side of rail and kind of fall the cue ball behind the green six. That's what he's looking at now. This was uh, the opening safety that he kind of missed early in the match. I think that one's a little light as well. See, and right there, what you do is forget about the two. Uh, the reason why he missed the snooker is he hit the two much thicker trying to get it down table. And I understand that, trying to guard against the jump shot, maybe. Is it time for him to try and bury a big shot here? I'm, I'm not sure the two even really banks. Extension call. It does bank to the upper left. His right side of the two. Probably trying to run the cue ball. Oh, wow. So here you go, Sufi. Your chance for the finals of the World Nine Ball Championship. And you could hear the buzz of anticipation around the crowd. And Wu's defense, if he dodges that side, he hit the shot pretty well. Just kind of like the match itself, maybe not meant to be. When he pulled off a three ball carom to beat Mika Imminen in the last 32, he let out a huge shout that was heard all around this vast auditorium. What will be the celebration this time Seven if these time. three balls find their target? Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm sure he's smiling because he's going to make this final. Don't see him missing this coming across for the nine in the side. Um, oh, a little light and now on the 50 feel. It's a little surprising, but should be OK. in sports are very rarely written. It is fairy tale time here in Kielsa. He can't quite believe it. Neither can I, neither can Jeremy. Yeah, unbelievable. And uh, I didn't mind seeing it. I feel for Wu, we had a great championship, but we're still gonna have more of this firing in the finals. So there it is.
the end of the match, he'd won 11 out of 12. Came through 11-4, which had not looked likely at all in the early stages. So if he can produce anything approaching that form today, he's going to be so hard to beat. Let's see what happens. Race to 11 for a place in the world final. Oh, missed the one ball. Dry break in the opener from Sanchez. Sometimes it can take you a little while to find the aiming point on the break. Obviously, the one ball wasn't far away. It both jaws, in fact. Well, our friend and colleague Jeremy Jones played Iraq when he was called into the Moscone Cup team at the last minute just over a year ago against David Alcady that went on for, I think it was 18 minutes, and it felt like about two hours because we're just not used to seeing that. Hard to imagine how Iraq realistically could go on much longer than that. Well, this has gone wrong, so it's going to be a chance. Well, you called it, Carl. You said once someone got a hook snooker, that could be the decisive moment. Doesn't have any great history in this championship, Mario. He been in the last 16 a couple of times. Both times he was beaten by the eventual champion, 2014. He actually beat Alex Pagalion along the way, lost to Niels Fyen, who went on to win the title. And then two years later, Ralph Suke was among the players he beat on his way to another last 16. And that time lost narrowly 11-9 to Alban Ocean, who likewise went on to become champion. Another good chance here for Mario. It's a good kick. He wasn't far away, was he, from potting the ball? Some days they go in, some days they don't. Not much you can really do about it. Mario, he, I think, is associated with the World Cup more than any other tournament. He's had so much success with Alban Ocean for Austria. Two wins and another appearance in the final and, indeed, a semi-final prior to all of that. So how much of a help is that going to be to him today? Because, obviously, in the World Cup, every match is played on the main table because there only is the main table. Yeah, it's massive. He will be familiar with the surroundings, you know, the fact that all eyes are on this match and... You know, you sat in your chair, so that's the experience you need. Look at where the cube has finished there. You literally couldn't put that better with your hand. It's got a nice angle. It's an easy pot. The early signs are good. Well, that's just about the best shot we've seen so far in the early stages of this semi-final. Players actually have specific cues for jump shots, and occasionally they use them to produce pots like that. seen many jump shots made this week yeah we said that a couple of days in and I think the percentage did go up a bit after that but overall yeah through the week for whatever reason or maybe for no reason at all been a lower percentage than usual Fran might not have the hook but there's no obvious safety shot here he can't seem to go forward with the three because that'll hit the purple five may be tempted to try and cut this ball in. As he sits down there, at least Sanchez Ruiz has now potted a ball in this match. Oh, that's nice. That is very nice. And that bump is OK as well. He had to go for the pot there. There was just simply no safety shot available. Here's another look. Watch how thin the cue ball snips this.
Some people believe in destiny and fate. A lot of people don't. When you've had a run like Mario he has had in this championship, probably helpful if you do. Have all those close finishes and survive them. You might start to believe that you're fated to win it. And whether it's true or not, if you can convince yourself of it, it can only help. Of course, Sanchez is number one, but he's number two in this event because SVB was number one. But that's the first bad sign. Yeah, that was a good chance. He won't be happy with that. But even though he has missed, because the cue ball's landed on the rail, this is going to be brutal for Sanchez to get a shot on the four. He's not going to get close to the That's four. Called. Even if he goes rail first, you feel like the six may play a part in that. Shot. That is a very good shot. Talked about the success he enjoyed in 2022. That, of course, meant it was a very lucrative year for him. Won well over a quarter of a million dollars. Leading money winner in pool around the world. Oh, shot called. Mario, your choice. As I was saying, Carl, I think it's important on a day like this when there might be a lot of newcomers to the sport to explain things like this. So tell us once again about the push out. Yeah, the next shot after the break, you were allowed to do what is called a push out. So Sanchez was trying to roll the three on the rail. He wasn't trying to leave it over the middle pocket. And then Mario's got the option of playing this shot or he can put Sanchez back in, but he fancies his jump shot, so he's playing it. And that's why, big favourite to make it. If the red three was on the side, rail. And I'm not saying he wouldn't have played it, but it would have been a little bit more difficult. So because Sanchez played a poor push out, Mario had to play the jump, so there's a lot going on with the push-out. It's a very skilled asset of the game. Yeah, and when you're playing the shot on the push-out, you can do anything, hit any ball, pretty much do whatever you want on the shot, and that isn't a foul. That absolute delightful. He's fighting for his life in this semi final. That could have gone wrong. Great response to the pressure, wasn't it? He knows this semi final could be in danger of passing him by. After a shot like that, I wouldn't say he deserves to win the rack. He's still got to pop the remaining balls, but it certainly was the sort of shot from which you'd expect to get the reward. And that is how it has turned out. Sanchez Ruiz closes the three behind once more at 5 2. He was a very good player for a number of years, but it's just moved up to a whole different grade. So that also means he's aware that you never know how long that's going to last. So you've got to make the most of it while you're playing like that. Oh, this is incredible. Wow. 
doing well, a bit of the high hurdles, goes over the two, somehow the cue ball gets back on the table, two drops in, and he's on the three in the side. Well, that is the greatest fluke I've ever seen. That is absolutely ludicrous, what I've just witnessed there. Do you think we need a replay? Extension, please. It's just bounced off the rubber and could have gone anywhere, but somehow comes back onto the table. What are the chances of that? Look at this. I mean, that is unbelievable. Okay, the fact that it's gone in and the cue ball's come round and landed on the three is <laughs> absolutely insane. I mean, if that changes the complexion of this match and Sanchez gets back in it, I've literally seen it all. We're going out there when the match is over with a thousand balls, and I'm going to ask you to do it once in that thousand. I don't reckon you will. Oh, but look what's happened to wow. Oh. And you wonder, was he just distracted by the moment and all the noise? Well, he went over to Mario, didn't he? And they had a bit of a laugh and a giggle. I mean, he's Why gone... Why would you do that, though? Break your own concentration? Yeah, he's gone from, like, a sort of embarrassment of, you know, an absolute crazy fluke to missing a golden chance. Mario's got to forget about what's going on and really punish this mistake now. Gone from the most unlikely part of his career to one of the most unlikely misses in consecutive shots. What do you play here, buddy? Oh, I think he's sending a cue ball into the nine. A carom. He's had a go, he's missed it by a mile. That is not a good shot. Not a good shot, not a good effort. Not a good shot. And potentially a really expensive one. If you're going to play the shot he's played, you can't be playing it that hard. Because if you miss the nine, look how far the cue ball has come up the table. Play it a little slower. If you miss it, you're leaving more distance. He's overcooked this. Oh, he's overcooked wow. it. Wow. Sanchez, he's just... He's not quite at the races. It wasn't easy. Them little cutbacks can be missed. Is this Mario he's day? Well, we've been talking about players giving each other gifts and how important it is to capitalise on them. This rack has been like a game of pass the parcel. Worrying signs, this. And a worrying scoreline for Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. He's now trailing by seven racks to two. It will just help him. It will. He will realise that maybe just slow down a little bit, try and think a little clearer. You know, it's losing's not a bad thing. Well, it is, but you know what I mean. You yeah. do learn it's not a the worst thing. So long as you can take something away from it. Yeah, they say you have to lose to learn. It's going airborne. The short stick is coming. Got to watch the scratch. Oh, he needs this to hold up. Is he going to leave the gap? There is a gap. He's got to be happy with that. Come wrong. Chance for Ruiz now. Now, what's he got here? Well, you can see he does have a shot. It always seems to be a ball, though, when you're trying to form a comeback. The Brown seven. Keep an eye on that ball where it is. Extension, please. It's part of that 
great year as a result, indeed, of that wonderful 2022. Sanchez Ruiz finally got into the Moscone Cup team for the first time. Tasted success with Europe in Las Vegas. So they won for the third year in a row. Well, what a result he's had here. The seven ball was going to play a pivotal role in this rack. But now where he's bumped the nine, he can chase the nine with the five ball. Could be the first run out from the break in the match. Here we go, 5-9 combo. To pull another rack back. And that is two in a row. He's done that in the whole match. Sanchez Ruiz closes to 7-4 behind. Is the 5 9 combination again, and this is what we were talking about, isn't it? Yes, he's still in a good position, but now it's 7 4, and that's got a totally different feel to 7 2. Sanchez Ruiz gets a little closer. Also, the break, break and win on your own break, only one for Sanchez, four for he. Oh, oh, oh Michael, that's unlucky, isn't it? Yeah. Every time you think we're getting a narrative, a pattern in this match, subsequent events always keep proving us wrong. Smacked in by the three to the side pocket. When you were saying about the fact that it's 7 4 and he's making a comeback, this is a big, big rack for the scoreline. little swerve yeah good shot that's the creativity of the pool player there didn't have the potting angle so he had to just bend it round a little bit but i'm not quite ready for that yet yeah i think you're right i think if you're still competing and you you've got some form of ranking and you're playing on the tour i don't know i find it a bit bizarre if you're captain really but I suppose there's not that many options, actually, when you start looking around. I wonder if we could ever get somebody from another sport to do it. <laughs> well, there's a thought now. You got someone in mind? Yeah, someone like Roy King. <laughs> well, that. This is tight in the side pocket. Could play safe in behind the nine. Just bump the five up table. Five would miss the seven. You could get the cue ball glued on the nine, but and with Fran take this ball on. He's got three seconds left. It's there. It is there. He knows that was a big shot. A massive shot. Maybe a, the shot that's going to help him get to the final. And I'm just noticing the last couple of moments, that familiar bounce in his step just seems to be coming back. Yeah, these three balls now, once he pots them, we're going to have to see what Mario's about. He's played well in this match, but he's going to be put under the gun now. He's in the territory territory where he has made a, a bit of a mess of these kind of matches last year, last season. And so... From 4 8, it's back to 7 8. Sanchez Ruiz will now be breaking with a chance to draw level. Something he hasn't been since the very beginning of the match. I think he does have to go forward. Oh, how do you like this? That is a good effort. He's not out the woods yet, but that was a good effort. Yeah, particularly in the situation when the match has really started to turn against him. said we were going to find out a lot more about Mario He and his makeup in this rack once he had the chance. And these signs are very encouraging. Oh, but stop the presses. 
What a finish we're going to have to this rack, Carl. Wasn't easy, that. On this slidey equipment, it's hard to get the cue ball to bite. So, yeah, you feel like it's a bad shot, but it's not as bad as you think, that. It was a really horrible shot. You just knew it. When he landed straight on the seven, this is what he's faced with. He's faced with a David Alcady. Alcady made one of these to win the Masters. Is it there? It's not. Has he left Sanchez a hanger? He has. Oh, has he? Or has he? No, just that last roll and a half, maybe. Changes this shot so much. Wow. Let's look at Sanchez's face. That usually tells us all we need to know. Extension called. Well, this is probably the most obvious comment I'll ever make in commentary, but this is the biggest moment of this match so far. Well, he's going for the corner. Or is he playing safe? He's playing safe. So Mario, take two for the bank shot. You surprised by that choice? You surprised he played safe? Yeah, it was obviously if he if he felt he could have chopped it in a pocket, he would have attacked it. Obviously the camera's always deceiving to us, but if he could have potted the ball, he would have gone for it. Second chance for Mario He. This is a little easier than the first one. Top left pocket. Is it in? It's not. He's missed two banks now. And he has left Sanchez a pot. Sanchez was patient there. He could have gone for a little bank or something himself. He decided to play safe and just hope he got another shot at the table. This to tie it up. After he scratched on the break in rack 12, he fell 8-4 behind. But now it's a hole. They both need three for a place in the World Championship Final. Good shot. They can be nervy then when you've got to roll it across the width of the slate and you've only got that one ball to land behind. Could go close to potting this in the left centre. Cue ball may go behind the eight as a hook. Oh, where is this going to go? Where is the five gonna go? Is it Sanchez's tournament? That is a good fluke. He didn't play that. He can bank this in the side as well. He's absolutely landed nice on the bank shot in the side. He's not played it. He's played the good cue ball. Again, another good safety shot. Now. Mario needs all sorts to happen here. There's no balls that are really going to help him. I don't even know if he can jump over. He can, he's got the jump cue. This is the biggest jump shot Mario He will face in this match. And he didn't get over the ball, it was too close. One. Sanchez stayed patient in this rack. He had a couple of bad rolls against him, but he's played some good safety shots. Ball in hand to get on the hill. And that, in all probability, is going to be that. saying earlier, Mario He would face a big test if he made it to the hill. How far ahead would he be? Well, as it's turned out, it's going to be Sanchez Ruiz to the hill first. And 
he's got there with half a dozen racks in a row. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz is one away from the final. Why this has happened again after a similar experience at the European Open. But now it's all about this man and a chance to underline his status in such emphatic fashion. Not many players have ever held the world and US Open titles at the same time. It's a monumental effort when you consider all the pool that has to be played and all the great players that have to be beaten to win titles of that stature. What a performance this has been, though. It really has. He looked like he was going to get beat in the semis. He's dug deep. He stayed positive. And he's just two balls away from making another major final. In the last 12 months, he's become World Cup winner. Moscone Cup winner on his debut become the US Open champion and of course he's become the world number one and if he wins one more match tonight he'll be the champion of the world Francisco Sanchez Ruiz from 7-2 down has beaten Mario He by 11 racks to 8